what can men do against such reckless hate? That's a line or a version of a line from Lord of the Rings. Um, and it's about when the orcs come to Helm's Deep. And it's basically saying that how do you cope when the people that you're facing feel nothing but hate? They've got no desire for peace. They've got no desire for love. They just feel hatred in their heart. And that's what family court can feel like when you're up against a narcissist. Family court itself can feel like the battleground and feel like the reckless hate that you feel towards you. And I want to talk about something that makes me feel very uncomfortable, to be quite honest, because it's not what I want to believe is happening within the system. But it, I know that it is. So what I want to talk about today is the abuse of professionals in the system. And before you go, oh, I don't care about the professional, blah, blah, blah. I mean, how this impacts your case. So you have got out and you have stood up to this person, this person who has distorted your reality, this person who has made it quite clear through overt and covert threats that there are severe consequences to you speaking out about them, to you revealing anything with, that happened within the family that doesn't paint them in a good light, i.e. the truth. You're already experiencing the, the very damaging consequences of that, especially if they're using your children as part of this. They are putting you through hell on earth. You know those consequences are real. What these people also do is when you go into the system and you work with CAFCAS officers, local authorities, judges, and any other professional, it might be about police, whoever. They, those people feel that same. When you're around these people, no matter how charming and how emotionally seductive they are, your energy, your, your senses, your spidey senses don't feel safe. Now, you, in the same way as the children can be manipulated to do, they will then project those feelings onto you and think that you are the reason for them feeling unsafe and for them feeling scared and that it's the tale must be true because they feel afraid. What's really happening is they're feeling afraid from that person. They are feeling afraid from the abuser. But it's become distorted in their own mind because they don't necessarily understand how their um, senses work. And they obviously don't understand how a narcissist can do that, how they can manipulate and project their, their feelings. And so what happens is they feel scared. And like I said, they project that onto you. You're to blame. You must be the one that's making them feel scared, not the person in front of them. However, for some of them, they do realise this person, I feel afraid of this person. And that might be through subtle threats or questions about their family, where they might live, something that lets them know that they've been doing a little bit of digging. They know something about them that makes them feel uncomfortable. That threat, it might, it might even be a professional threat of, I'll destroy you, I'll, you know, I'll take your license, whatever it is. And we've seen this, we've seen this in the case involving Melanie Gill, who was using scientific and attachment-based tools to assess a parent as being, having these alienating behaviours. She got dragged through the mud, she was in the national press, all because she was doing her job. And that is the pressure that these people put on. And so, and again, I am not condoning this, I just feel it's important that we know the whole picture. So you've got professionals who are left feeling like their their lifeline, that you know, their their jobs are on the line because they're going to make complaint after complaint after complaint. They're going to get their licenses stripped. They're going to ruin their reputation. So they've got that going on. That you know, that they they're being threatened. Their livelihood is being threatened. There might be threats against their family members. 
like I said, it's all very subtle, nothing that they could prove in court. It's, it's, sometimes it's felt, sometimes it's very coercive and, and covert. But they know that it's a... they. The thing is, with these sort of people, with narcissists, they don't actually have to do anything. They just have to make you believe that they could do something. And that fear makes you act in certain ways. You know that. You've been in a relationship with them. You know that they actually didn't have to raise a hand to you or you know, go and tell someone something, the threat was there. That you knew that they would if you didn't do the thing that they wanted you to do. And that's the position that professionals are often put in themselves. Again, not condoning and not excusing. I just think it's important that we put everything in context because what I find with a lot of my clients is they immediately blame the social worker, the cat gas officer, the judge. And I am not exonerating them of any blame whatsoever well what i am saying is remember the behaviors that you've experienced in that relationship they treat everyone like that the fear that you feel knowing what your ex is capable of they feel that too and so what the your ex is trying to do is obviously alienate you from the professionals as well to label you as the bad guy label you as aggressive and abusive and won't engage you know all of those things that make you look like you are the problem and they so they can present as this innocent in front but actually it's more complicated than that because they bully they manipulate they strong arm professionals by threatening complaints by making these overt maybe covert threats against their things that are important to them and so either consciously or unconsciously, they're left with this choice of, do I keep going after this person and risk everything that's important to me, my children, my livelihood, my home, my safety, my job, my career, or do I just give them what they want? And I'm not saying it's right that they give them what they want. I just, again, I'm just... We have to have the context here. We have to understand the full ramifications of what these people are capable of. And it's why you find that you might have someone who, a professional who you think gets it, who you think supports you, and then all of a sudden they do a 180. And you blame them and you think, well, how can you get it so wrong? Actually, just think there might be other things going on here. Because like I say, these people have the same playbook with every single person they meet. That's what a personality disorder is. It's a very distinct way of interacting with other people. A blueprint for relationships, whether they be romantic or professional or any kind of relate or parental, any kind of relationship follows the same blueprint so all the things that you are feeling and have felt in that relationship and the consequences that you are experiencing other people know that this is how they recruit flying monkeys it's how they recruit people to do their bidding it's because they've seen it and they know what the consequences are so what can you do about that what can you do against such reckless hate well, as we saw in lord of the rings working together really helps so get a team around you get a team of people who understand these dynamics and can support you build your resilience build your knowledge understand the dynamics that are play heal the wounds within you that have created you know the anxiety the the um attachment wounds that have brought this into play Heal whatever you can, because healing and taking that responsibility empowers you in a way that the narcissist will never feel comfortable with. They say an empowered empath is a narcissist's worst nightmare, and it's true. Heal. Empower yourself in whatever way you can. Can we fully overcome everything? I believe that we can, but it's a step-by-step -step process and don't don't neglect your healing part of that. Find a support system. This is why we need robust solicitors. We need robust barristers who will do the right thing and challenge judges and challenge Kafka officers on the stand and ask these questions. Ask them, have you ever felt afraid of this person? Have you ever felt threatened by this person? These are questions that are really important to give 
to really tell the judge this is what you know this is how these adults feel adults with experience of working in difficult cases felt threatened felt afraid how do you think the children feel these people have been manipulated what chance do the children have focus on building networks and building teams working with people who get it obviously you can work with me I'm just one. There are so many now that are coming up all the time, which is great for you. You get consumer choice. Find someone who you absolutely resonate with and talk it through with them. Build a strategy that knows all of these things and we can overcome it. Take care of yourself and if you want to check out the work that I do, I'll pop a link below. It is getcourtready.co.uk or getcourtready.com and Take a look at the work that we do. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.